What's really happening in Red Bull Formula 1? Max Verstappen threatening to leave, Christian Horner involved in a scandal, Adrian Newey which might end up in Ferrari. In this video we will recap everything that happened inside Red Bull. Everything we know and everything we might not know. Apparently everything is starting in February with the breaking news that Christian Horner might be involved in sexual harassment with one of the Red Bull employees. First of all, I want to say that this is a very sensitive topic. Because what's involved is the private, and I mean private, life of two people. There are their families, their colleagues, and thousands of other people involved. So there is a private world that must be respected. And we will do our best while reconstructing the story. So in this video, I want to focus as much as possible on what's happening inside Red Bull. Because ever since the first reports came out about the complaint against Horner, journalists in Formula 1 paddock have pointed out one very important thing. That these sexual misconduct allegations might be part of a power fight inside Red Bull. It doesn't mean that they are necessarily connected with this power fight. However, it's sure that they have fueled it. Without these allegations, we probably would not be here today talking about Verstappen that might leave Red Bull. It was super complicated to put all the informations together. I will not link in the description every source, because if you search on Google, you can find everything we're talking about. So, if we want to understand what's truly happening inside Red Bull, we need to start from the beginning. And I mean the real beginning. Our story starts with the Dieselgate in 2016. The Dieselgate? <laughs> but what the hell has it do with the Horner chats? You will understand soon. It's 2016 and the automotive world is being rocketed by a sensational news. The Volkswagen Group allegedly equipped some diesel cars with a control logic capable of bypassing the limits on pollutant emissions. Except during the homologation tests. In other words, Volkswagen was lying about emissions. During the homologation, the car was in compliance. But then, when it went into the hands of customers, it was not. Well, the affair ends up in courts and on newspapers all around the world, Volkswagen end up with a huge image damage and huge fines to pay and therefore makes a drastic decision. Porsche and Audi out of the WEC, the World Endurance Championship. Just imagine that Audi was racing with the diesel engine, which by the way was a true gem. You know what? At this point, better to focus on the Formula E, which on an image level is more sustainable and cleaner. Well, years go by, Volkswagen Group recovers, and what do they do, the automotive makers, when they can spend money? They go back in more sports, which is the best possible publicity for those who build cars. So, at this point, where do Audi and Porsche, the two reference of the group, want to go? Well, obviously, they want to go in Formula 1. Yeah, because now we are in 2021, the incredible season finale of Hamilton against Verstappen, drive to survive, everybody watching Formula 1, Formula 1 is the center of the world and Audi and Porsche want to be in the center of the world. They have one goal, to get into Formula 1 by 2026, when there will be the new power units, easier to design and more sustainable. Plus, they want to be in control of the team they will be racing with, they don't want to be just motorists. So in turn, both Audi and Porsche are proving the ground with McLaren which in 2021 is not exactly doing well with finances. But you know what? McLaren always declined. You can be our motorist if you want, but the team remains ours. So at that point, Audi goes to Sauber and to make it very simple, buys the whole company. All of it. In 2026, Sauber will become Audi. Chassis, engine, everything will have the four rings on it. Good. Audi got what they wanted, so we can take it out of our story. That leaves Porsche. Porsche also wants to get in Formula 1. And probably you don't know it, but they already studied a power unit from 2016 in great secrecy. But then nothing had been done about it, also because of the diesel gate. So who can Porsche be together with? Well, with Red Bull, which actually is looking for someone to develop the power unit with. Wait, 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 but Red Bull has Honda engines. <sighs> yes, 
At the beginning of 2021, actually, Red Bull is without engine. I mean, they have an engine, but in 2020, Honda announced that they will be leaving Formula One. The plan is very clear and I will simplify it very much. Honda will continue to build power units for Red Bull until 2025, which is something easy to do because those power units are frozen and not big changes until 2026. Then for 2026, bye bye Formula One. So the thing is that Red Bull for 2026 and beyond will not have an engine. So here comes Christian Horner, the CEO of Red Bull Racing since 2005, who has an idea buzzing his mind. What if Red Bull make the engine themselves? Well, it makes sense. Red Bull has an engine problem since 2014. First, they have the Renault power unit that didn't work. Then they got the Honda power unit, which were working, but now Honda wants to leave Formula One. Much better to build the engine themselves. At least you can have complete control over it. Horner goes to Dietrich Matesic, the big Red Bull boss, and convinces him of the project. Green light. There's the budget to build the factory and to hire the engineers. Well, one year or so goes by and Red Bull has set up Red Bull powered trains. Power Uni 2026 will be homemade. Well, there is a little problem. Red Bull has a lot of money, sure. But making a Formula One power unit is really complicated. It wouldn't be bad to find a partner. Maybe a car maker? Well, someone is there. Porsche. Between the end of 2021 and 2022, contacts between Red Bull and Porsche are intensifying. Porsche's offer is very serious. We participate in the creation of the Power Unit 2026, but we also want more. 50% of Red Bull racing. In short, a real partnership, something serious. That's going to be an unbeatable colossus on paper. Red Bull and Porsche together. So scary. Well, of course, things didn't go that way. And if we want to understand why, first we need to know how Red Bull Empire is structured. The Red Bull Empire, since its founding in 1987, has maintained a very simple pattern compared to its size. Sides that it's huge. Everything is controlled by Red Bull GmbH, an Austrian corporation which is split in two parts as of 1987. 51% goes to Chaleo Jovidia, a Thai entrepreneur, while 49% goes to Dietrich Matesic. But wait, wasn't Red Bull GmbH owned by Dietrich Matesic? I mean, when he was at the races, everybody was talking about him. He was the big boss. Well, no. Dietrich Matesic is the man that created Red Bull and made it a unique company in the world, but the majority of Red Bull is owned by Chaleo Juvidia, the Thai entrepreneur who created Kratin Dang, the drink which is at the origin of Red Bull. Matesic met this man on a trip to Bangkok and from there the venture began. Red Bull is mostly Thai. Ok, so in 2022, the moment where we stopped our story, Red Bull GmbH controls an endless series of companies. In addition, obviously, to selling cans, Red Bull, Red Bull Cola, Red Bull Organics. For example, Red Bull sells clothes under the Alpha Tower brand. They have a record company called Red Bull Records. They have an interest in many sports, like the Red Bull Leipzig and other big soccer teams. And then they are in Formula 1 with the two teams, Red Bull Racing and Virtual Cash Up Racing Bulls. V-Carb, if you want to say it short. So, the CEO of Red Bull GmbH is Dietrich Matesic. And although he is the minority partner, he runs everything because he has a very strong connection with the Jovidia family. Even with Chaler, which is the son of Chaleo who after the death of the father in 2012, inherited their 51% of the company. So the Thai side, although has the majority, left the control of the company in the hands of Matesic. On 22 October 2022, Dietrich Matesic passes away. This is a huge blow for the Red Bull Empire. Because when Matesic passes away, a huge power vacuum is created. Why? Because having Matesic such a strong bond with the Ovidia family, as far as Formula 1 was concerned, he had total control over it. That was a smart move from the Thai family. Something like, Dietrich, you know much more than us about Formula 1, so we trust you, do whatever you want. And I can say that he did quite well. So, the moment Matesic passes away, there is a power gap. His shares, 49% of Red Bull GmbH, go to his son, Mark. But the control of the Red Bull GmbH is divided among several executives. In particular, we are interested in Oliver Minzlaff, the CEO of corporate projects and new investments. So, Red Bull Racing, Racing Bulls, and also Red Bull Powertrains fall within the part of the group controlled by Minzlaff. Wow, well, that's a problem. 
because Red Bull Racing already has a CEO. It is Christian Horner, who has always been used to dealing directly with Matesic. And Matesic, in turn, has almost always given Horner full control over it. Exactly like the Thai family did with Matesic. The only condition of this control was that he had Helmut Marko on his side. Helmut Marko always had a smoky position inside Red Bull Racing. He was close friend with Matesic and he always had been a counselor in his Formula 1 adventure. Helmut Marko advised Matesic as a former driver. He managed all the Red Bull young drivers and he was involved in many political issues and decisions in the paddock. He was what we can call a great eminence. This balance worked until Matesic's death. After that, something broke. And in these days of chaos inside Red Bull, we understood what broke. The civil war in Red Bull Racing House, according to various reconstructions, arose out of a power struggle. We can say that there were two factions in this fight. On one side, we have Christian Horner with the Horner faction. After Matesic's death, Horner wants to keep control over Red Bull Racing. In fact, he wants to separate the team as much as possible from the rest of the Red Bull Empire. His vision is a mega company that includes Red Bull Racing, which is the team where Verstappen is racing, Racing Bulls, Red Bull Power Trains, and Red Bull Advanced Technologies, which is the company that designs exclusive supercars and, by the way, I don't know if you know it, they also design other extreme projects like the America's Cup boat Alinghi. Here, of this company, according to some reconstruction, Horner would also want to become shareholder. Something like Toto Wolf with Mercedes. Because I don't know if you know it, but the Mercedes AMG Formula 1 racing team is not owned by Mercedes. Only a third of it is of Mercedes. One third is of Ineos and one third is of Toto Wolf. So maybe Christian Horner wanted to do something like that. But we can imagine that the Yovidia family could remain the major shareholder of this new mega company. On the other side of the civil war, we have the Austrian faction Oliver Minzlaff, Helmut Marko and people think also Mark Matesic. I mean, Red Bull GmbH controls the team. And it's normal to think that they don't want to lose control over it. And in all this civil war, where does Porsche fit in? Well, it goes right into it. The Austrian faction, again, according to the reconstructions, is in favor of Porsche Hofer. 50% of Red Bull Racing in exchange of the collaboration on the power units. Christian Horner, however, on the other hand, doesn't want it. Doesn't like this at all. I mean, if you want to separate this branch from the rest of the company and own part of this mega company, how could he accept giving 50% of it to Porsche? Also, if Porsche wants to be a partner, don't you think that they might want to choose somebody else to rule the company? That means that Horner might risk to lose the position. Well, the Red Bull Foundations had this first big crack. Who wins the first battle? The contention over the engine. Christian Horner wins the battle. Especially because, I want to remind you, according to reconstructions, in this whole thing had the support of the Yovidia family. So if you have the support of the major shareholder, it's unlikely that you lose a fight. So, on February 3rd, 2023, Red Bull announces a partnership with Ford for the 2026 season. No Porsche, but Ford. Ford will brand the new power units in collaboration with Red Bull. They will have with the know-how and little more. In short, a lot of money and know-how is coming in, but the control will remain in Christian Horner's hand. That seems the end of the fight, the end of the war. Horner won, calm sea, but instead below that sea something was boiling. Because a year goes by and everything changes. On February 5th, 2024, the Horner affair begins. The scoop is from the Dutch newspaper The Telegraph. Christian Horner has been accused of inappropriate behavior by an employee and for this reason, he is in the focus of an internal investigation by Red Bull GmbH. That's right, the Austrian factions company, which, however, is quite normal considering the Red Bull GmbH controls everything. On February 9th, Horner is questioned in London, far away from the team headquarters. Then he is presented to the RB20 launch and testing in Bahrain. He dodges questions. He is attacked more or less elegantly by Toto Wolf and Zach Brown, Formula One hope that the affair will end as soon as possible, even Ford is pushing to clarify the affair as soon as possible, I mean, 
the usual political correct stuff. But the thing is that nobody thinks that Horner will remain in charge of Red Bull. So the affair closes on February 28th. Red Bull announces in a few lines that the internal investigation, conducted by an independent lawyer, has closed with the rejection of the reports against Horner. Horner is innocent. It all seems over. And so, case closed. Well, not exactly, because the affair reopens the day after on February 29th. Indeed, in the afternoon of the second free practice of the Bahrain Grand Prix, news emerged that an anonymous account had allegedly shared a Google Drive folder full of screenshots of the chat between Horner and the victim, including photos and videos. The emails reached by the sharing would be those of leading panda journalists, team principals and FIA and Liberty Media Management. No one has ever confirmed that the material in that Google Drive folder is true, is real. No one, however, has said that it's false. Not even Horner. We come to today, mid-March 2024. Let's just talk about the affair from a legal point of view. We thought that it was over, but it isn't. Because according to the March 15th edition of The Telegraph, the rival employee has reportedly decided to appeal to the decision, as it is her right, appealing to the decision of clearing Horner from all the charges. The employee, whose identity unfortunately emerged after the leaks, was suspended by Red Bull Racing before the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix. In addition, according to BBC, the woman also reportedly reported Horner to the FIA. In addition, another internal investigation is underway at Red Bull Racing, also also sponsored by Red Bull GmbH. This investigation would be aiming to find out who was the mole inside Red Bull and to find out who sent that link to the journalists. At the time of the recording of this video, which is February 20th, we have no further information about the appeal or this second investigation. The big, big question that I ask myself and that I want to invite you to think about is if there really was a sexual harassment, which is a really serious thing, why wasn't it reported to the justice? When such bad things happen, you want to go to the police. You want to report it to the justice. But apparently, according to the media, all the complaints have been done internally. And if you make the complaint internally within the company, you know that you're going to end into some power games and that you might not find justice. If you want to find justice, you usually follow the law, unless the real goal is something else. I don't want to say anything else about this because we don't know anything more. I just want you to think about it and let me know in the comments what you think. The story of the power battle, however, is not over yet. And who knows when it will be over? Because after the Bahrain Grand Prix, Jos Verstappen, Max's father, said Horner must go. He complains, but this situation is his fault. If he doesn't leave, the team implodes. Mamma mia, Max's father saying something like that. An uproar broke out. In Spain, some reconstruction even emerged that Yoss was having an affair with that Red Bull employee, supposedly harassed by Horner. Look it up if you don't believe it. They claim that this woman was involved in some kind of relationship with Horner and Yoss. Then we go to Jeddah for the second Grand Prix, and during qualifying, Helmut Marko drops the bomb. I may be suspended from Red Bull and have to decide my future. It isn't clear what's truly going on. Maybe Marco is being investigated as the mole, or maybe that's just a counterattack from Horner. The important fact is that Max Verstappen, for the first time, takes a strong position about the affair. After the qualifying, he makes clear that without Helmut Marco, he might not remain in Red Bull. And there is also a rumor of a clause in Max Verstappen's contract with Red Bull, which states that if Marco leaves, Max Verstappen is allowed to leave if he wants. This is a true earthquake for Red Bull. And indeed, on the race, the dust settles. Oliver Minslav arrives at the circuit and meets with Marco, and coming out of a meeting, Helmut Marco says, I remain here and we have to calm the team. It might be a coincidence, but the day after the race of Jeddah, a meeting was scheduled in Dubai between Minshlaf and the Uovidia family, perhaps to settle all the mess. And Horner? Well, Horner went on the counter-attack about Max Verstappen position with a phrase worth thousands of words. No one is more important than the team. Wow. <laughs> So, the affair seems to be closed here. 
for the moment because I expect to be making part two of the video according to how things will go in the next weeks. There are still some questions unanswered and I want to leave you with three big questions. Is it really all over? Will everything remain the same in Red Bull Racing with Horner in charge? Could any of the Red Bull engineers be so tired that he might leave? Somebody like Adrian Newey? Maybe in Ferrari? It's clear that the big teams like Ferrari could be really interested in hiring the best engineer nowadays in the world. We understand there is a civil war, but why Max Verstappen might be interested in leaving Red Bull? Now that he is winning, it doesn't make sense. I mean, it's clear that Verstappen doesn't give a damn about this power fight. He doesn't care, he just wants to win races. That's none of his business. Unless... Max Verstappen sniffed what some people are saying in the paddock. Because in fact, some rumors are circulating that for the power unit 2026, Ferrari, Mercedes and perhaps Honda are much more ahead in the development. And so maybe the four Red Bull power units could not be that performing. So if you wanna win, you have to change team. And that might be the reason why Mercedes and Aston Martin suddenly became more interested in Max Verstappen. This was everything we know about the Red Bull case. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did so, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel and let me know in the comments below what you think. Thanks for watching.